Hello everyone, Morgan Hibbs here with Lynn County Farm Bureau. I'm so excited to be visiting your classroom for a, another virtual lesson. It is now November and we are going to do a fun lesson looking at the harvest of a very important crop. I'm going to show you a few samples and see if you can identify them. So the first sample, can you identify what is inside this bucket? Looking at it, what do you think this is? You can brainstorm as a class, or you can think to yourself, what is inside of this bucket and who might this feed? Why would we grow this crop? Okay, the second bucket I'm going to show you looks similar, but looks also kind of different. So think to yourself, what is this crop used for? Can you identify it? You can again brainstorm as a class or think to yourself, it's kind of a more of a golden color. It's also got a different texture. If you have one of our kits, you have these samples in your kit and you can pass them around the class or take turns looking at the samples. Those two samples look very similar, but they also have some differences. If you look at the size of the pieces, they are different. This one's a little bit larger. These are a little bit skinnier. They're also different in color. This has some green to it, some brown. This one's more of a golden color. It also has got some shine to it. Okay, did you identify what these samples were? If you said, hey, you are right, this one right here is hay. Hay is a type of grass. We grow hay to feed cows and sheep. We use it to feed horses. Grass is used to feed ruminant animals. Can you say the word ruminant? Ruminant. Ruminant is an animal that has hooves and it has a, a digestive system that has four compartments in it. So a lot of people think ruminants have four stomachs, but they only have one stomach, but their stomach has four chambers in it. If you've ever seen a cow out in the field, it kind of looks like they're chewing some gum. That is called chewing the cud. Cud is grass that has gone into the first chamber. They actually regurgitated that or spit it back up and they chewed it a second time. Then it goes into the second chamber. So grass is pretty complex to digest. It's got a, a, a thick cell wall and people, we can't digest it very well, but ruminants can digest it very well and they can turn grass into a delicious uh, meat like how cows can turn the, the grass into hamburger. Now grass uh, is grown in the summertime and most farmers will have their cows out on pasture. But during the winter time, does grass grow well? It doesn't. So farmers have to grow the grass in the summertime. They have separate fields. They have pastures that the cows are on and then they have separate fields for uh, mowing and making hay bales. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay, the second one, the second bucket, okay, did you guess what this was? This is called straw. Straw is made from cereal plants. It can be made from oats, uh, wheat. It can, cereal plants give us a more of a smooth, kind of silky texture. It doesn't have as much nutrients in it as hay does. Animals can still eat this, but it's not going to give them the same nutrients that hay would. A lot of farmers use this to make bedding. Uh, so they, especially like maybe dairy farms might use this for bedding where the dairy cows are going to lay. Uh, we might use this for a cow who's about ready to have a calf. Uh, this might be used for sheep to lay on. So straw is more used as a bedding. Straw can also be used to make different products. Have you ever heard of a straw hat? Straw can be used to make some different products because the texture of the stalks 
a little bit more uh, have a little bit more texture and they're a little bit thicker than the hay the hay uh, pieces. There are different kinds of hay. We have rye hay here. Um, we also have ground alfalfa. Uh, and those are just different, two different types. Those are all different types of grasses that you can use to make hay. Uh, the alfalfa is going to be a little bit more rich, uh, and you want to make sure that animals don't eat too much of it. It's kind of similar to if you eat a lot of sweets. The alfalfa is going to have a little bit higher sugar content to it. It's going to be uh, give the animals a little bit more energy, and so we want to make sure that we don't overfeed alfalfa hay to the animals. Okay, at this point in the video, if you have not watched the Ball Family uh, Farm Chat on hay and straw, I encourage you to pause this video and go and watch it now. That will give you an overview. I took the camera out to the farm and I interviewed my dad uh, and we went through the process all the way through harvesting the hay. Okay, now that you've listened to that story uh, or watched that video, uh, we have a story here called Hey, Hey, Hey. Uh, there is a read aloud video in the, on the website lincoag.com. Uh, and this story is looking at, similar to the video, of how hay is made. I won't read it here since you have a separate video of it, but I encourage you to also go and listen to this book. Okay, as a review, when you were watching the video, there were a couple different machines that you might have seen. Some of the machines uh, were used to cut the hay, so that is called a mower. So once the hay is grown, so we first plant the seeds, we let the, the grass grow, and then we mow the hay. We use a mower with a tractor, and the mower is going to cut the, the grass, very similar to how you mow your yard at home. The second step is to rake the hay. So we want to rake the hay so that we can flip it and dry, the sun can dry the other side, and then also put that in, into nice rows. So then when the tractor and baler come through, so that third stage is the baler, which is a big machine. So we have a big machine that makes big round bales. We also have a smaller baler that makes square, ba square bales. So they go through and follow the rows that the rake push the hay together and they pick it, picks it up and it either puts it into a big round bale or a smaller square bale. And then it's held with twine uh, to either lift and carry or if you have a large round bale, it's maybe going to have a netting on it. In the video, it talked about how the process works. It went into more detail, but that's just a, a review of the process of how hay is made. You have an activity in your kit or online that is a sequencing activity, and now you can go and work on that activity. The last thing you can do is write a poem. So we have this activity sheet that walks through the steps of how to write a syncane, a syncane poem. And this is, a, for example, we have two example poems here. I'll read them to you. Kittens, frisky, playful, meow, jumping, bouncing, creep on padded paws, mischief. A second one says, agriculture, plants, animals, abundant, and ever-growing food on our table, life. So now I would like you to write one about the tractor. It goes through and helps you figure out what to write in each line. So the first one is just the title. The second one is two words, a describing word, three words for the third line, an action of a title, four words, a statement or feeling, and the last line is one word, a cinnamon of the title, the same meaning, but a different word as the title. Then once you have your poem written out, you can copy the tractor syncing neatly onto the tractor diagram. So then you have a sheet here. So if you make mistakes and you want to erase, you can do that on your, your practice sheet. And then you can write your final draft onto this tractor. 
You can also decorate or color this tractor if you would like. Some words you might use. I thought of some words that came from the video that might be helpful when writing your poem. We have words like seed, grass, hay, straw, bale, green, mow, rake, livestock, machine, technology. Can you think of other words that tie in with today's lesson? You can brainstorm as a class. If you have poems you would like to share with us, we would love to see your finished template and you can send those to us by emailing them uh, to Morgan Hibbs. Excited to see you virtually in December. Have a great day.